Welcome to the Supported Living Property Podcast with your host, me, Lisa Brown, the place to learn about supported living property investing. Hi, Liz. It's great to have you here today. Um, Thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much, Lisa, for having me. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Liz, do you want to tell people a little bit about you for those who don't know you? Yes. Well, my name's Liz Bateson. um, I'm usually found on Facebook somewhere. Um, I run quite a few different businesses. So I have a finance business, Preneur Capital. I have a, a networking business, High Net Connect. But I also do run other property businesses behind the scenes. And, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, because actually supported living, supported accommodation was one of the very first things I did in the world of property all those years ago. So it was um, it, it really did open my eyes to what is possible um, and the power that we can um, really wield as property developers and managing agents and all kinds of good things in this industry so yeah I do a bit of everything actually Lisa. (laughs) You do but I think as you said you're not so well known at the moment for your property side you're talking more about your networking and your finance side so it's great to get you here talking about property today. Thank you yeah. So yeah it's fab. Do you want to talk a little bit about supported living and and, um, how you got into it? Mm. Yes so actually it was um it was one of those things, I think a lot of people, I started off on my background's banking and finance. And so um, came into the world of property through, um, you know, some very seductive ads that you get on Facebook. And I thought, oh, I can be financially free in six months. And, you know, fell for all of that. Um, and, and then as I started to build my connections with the property community, um, I built a particular connection with a guy who was actually um training people to just source blocks of flats for the purpose of supported living so it was very niche it was very specific and he was making it seem like you know this is some this is a a a booming um strategy and unfortunately you know we do need a lot of a lot of these spaces for people to support them so there was the feel good factor obviously making a difference but also it was it was a a lucrative strategy and so as somebody that really didn't know anything about property sourcing I went in feet first you know paid my membership went in there and thought property sourcing was going to be the easiest thing in the world (laughs) oh my god property sourcing is probably the hardest one of the hardest jobs in property but, to do it well absolutely yes, yeah. yeah yeah precisely to do it well so um he was a great teacher and uh as I said it, it was made easy because it was very niche it was specifically for um a particular provider supported housing provider and actually sourcing to order so we knew exactly what they wanted and exactly where they wanted it so it really took a lot of the work out of it for us so really that was that was my first foray into property sourcing and um, I was just one of those very very eager people you know letters everywhere right move constantly didn't really deeply think about the difference I was making by creating these you know connections I just wanted to get into property and so supported living at the time I think it was about four or five years back now it wasn't really as popular as it is now it wasn't something as well known um, as it is now so I kind of felt myself explaining myself a lot about what we what we were doing and why we were doing it but yeah for me initially it was just about finding these properties and getting them into the hands of the, um, the supported living provider and it was a quite an exciting time it was a really exciting time because it was big blocks of flats so mm-hmm. that's good and it was very exciting um, but as time went on um I started to really think about what was actually going on here and I wanted to get more deeply involved. And I wish, I wish, I wish I'd found you before that. I don't think you'd have started this um, then, had you, Lisa? No, no. (laughs) There's a lot of mystery around it. There's a lot of mystery around it and there's a lot of things you can do wrong and there's a lot of things you need guidance with. Yeah. Um, So I was kind of going in blind, actually. Mm. So as, as somebody that wanted to develop my own properties um, and create something myself I didn't really understand what I was doing but um, 
as as with most things in life, it comes down to relationships, relationships with providers, relationships with people that have got great knowledge that have done it before, relationships with lenders that know the right products. So I've been there and I've done it. And I have to say, this is now my favourite property strategy and one I shall continue forever. And that's brilliant. And that's what, you know, and that's, you know, because we just got chatting randomly, didn't we, at an event yeah. about stuff. And I hadn't realised you had an interest in supported living at all. So, yeah. you know, and so, so what is it that you're doing now in supported living? Yes. Well, now it's for my own portfolio, really, because um, as um, I mentioned before, because I'm, I'm bridging lender myself and um, I see lots of deals come through. Um, it did make me think, you know, there are, there are certain things that, that you can do just for the money and there are certain things you can do for making an impact and and there were quite a few deals coming through that were for supported living but actually we couldn't fund those particular ones and we could fund the development of course but it was difficult finding the exit the actual end you know that part of it mm. and so um i was actually really curious as to why is it so hard? Like, what's going on here? We need these properties for people. Why is it so difficult? And, and as a lender, I started to understand a little bit more deeply about what's going on from the investor's point of view, um, you know, certain tenant types and certain things and boxes that have to be ticked. Um, but I was really persistent with it. And so eventually, 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 we found perfect um, property for supported living. Um, and created something which could have, um, it was actually conversion, created something that could have gone directly to um, becoming an HMO for professionals, or we could have this fantastic relationship that we've built up with all of these supported living providers over the years. Um, we could have actually do something that actually made a difference. And so that's what we did. So we ended up getting a nice um, long lease um, on a property. And we had some people put in there that, that needed it desperately, especially in the area that, that um, I invest in. And it was it was an eye opener because there were some little things about it that just made me um, just make me, you know, sleep more soundly at night, knowing that I'm actually helping some people out. Obviously, I can't give you exact details of the tenant type, but it's people that need help. And, and of course, they're all different types there, but it's people that need help and people that I could identify with as well. And that really brought it home to me. So it was like the first time I thought, oh, this is something I can do that's not just about the money. And so from there, all we do now is like we just keep building our relationships up with these um, providers. That's the key, really, is finding out again, going right back to the old days. What do they want? Where do they want it? Um, so you've kind of you've done a lot of the hard work already. Those relationships do take time, though. I'm sure you probably um, teach people. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight, does it? They don't no, just trust no. you. No, and that's that's the thing. It, it is relationships, as you say, and it takes time. And it's hard. A lot of people really struggle with establishing those relationships and finding. I mean, that's why we set up the gateway was to help people with those connections, because it is hard. And if you're not sure you're navigating a whole new system, it's quite tricky to get into, isn't it? And understand speaking the same language as people and all of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I found it very competitive as well. Actually, I found there was lots of um when we were doing the sourcing particularly there was a lot of competition between um trying to get the right deal for the provider before the other person mm -hmm. did and there was a, there was a lot of um again there's a lot of um there's a lack of knowledge out there and especially if you're not just sourcing if you are actually doing the developments yourself you must 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 have the most fantastic legal team broker finance people on your side because I messed up and um, at one point ended up trying to work with um, a product a financial product that wasn't right for supported living um, and ended up going oh my god at the 11th hour and ended up having to scrap that start again and lost about 15,000 pounds in the process yeah which was a real kick in the teeth but but as with all these things, I think particularly with supported living, you should do this anyway, if anything in life, but particularly you just want to make sure that everything you do is above board. Everything is absolutely spot on. Um, and, you know, the places that we develop are, are absolutely glorious. We want people to have a fantastic time living in there. Um, it's not just about getting as 
many people into a place as much as possible and making as much money out of it. Um, and when I and these things do exist, sadly, and when I find out about them, like, um, you know, they're, they're definitely on my block list because it does um, it does happen. But that's why it's so important to educate more people in this strategy to get yeah. the standards up. Absolutely. I mean, what you were saying about finance is really key. And I think any property investors who've explored supported living will have found that it is a challenge, isn't it? It's a problem trying to find the right products. There are some out there since we've been talking about it. There are more and more products coming out. And I think that's a trend we're hoping to see more of. And we're hoping by the power of everyone talking about supported living, we're going to get more and more products available. It definitely is needed. But it can be tricky to find the right product and tempting, like you say, to go. But the interest rates are so much lower if I went with this one. And it's almost a buy to let. So why don't I just do? that it's really very very easy to to go down that route but you'll end up with a non-compliant property exactly. you know, and, and and that can cause you and your property business a lot of problems but it can also cause the tenants in your property to end up being evicted at the end of the day and that's the last thing that you want yeah yeah well that 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 was one of the worries it was mm. like oh my goodness like you know if you're not doing this right you could be creating a real big problem for everybody. And um, it's very much a team sport, this strategy. I mean, all property strategies are, but this really is. You've really got to work very closely with your provider and you've got or have somebody between that really does understand and and know exactly exactly what they need. Mm. And our provider was amazing. They actually, um, you know, they went and put like a... Um, uh, like a plot in the garden for them to grow vegetables and they did all the fencing and they actually put cameras everywhere and you know at their own cost because mm. it was really important for them to make sure that they had the very highest standards as a very responsible provider and that that's created such a good feeling between us and them is that we want to do more with them we just can't and you know what unfortunately it's just really hard to find enough properties mm. actually it's just and the market's so hot at the moment mm -hmm. and it's really really tough to get the stuff that you can do to invest in but it is possible um and it's just about keeping those lines of communication open and be honest with them as well and say actually we might need a bit more for this property to make it wash its face with yeah. the vendor, or you know it's about keeping those um, negotiations there so everything's up for negotiation the only thing that isn't is the standard really and keeping those standards massively yeah. high absolutely was there anything particularly you had to do to the property that you've handed yes. over yeah absolutely we we had to gut and do, re uh, configure the entire thing we wanted to make sure that everybody had their own um space there were no shared bathrooms or anything like that we wanted to make sure it's very private make sure obviously everything's up to a normal hmo spec but um i said they put in cameras for security and uh not anything intrusive, just for the outside, mm. um, really, not to keep an eye on them, but to keep an eye, make sure that there was nobody coming and visiting. And and um, that was really our, just, it was the level of security and the, and the privacy that we went to the nth degree for. Mm. And we did actually, as we did take it down to brick, we just made it look really, really lovely and special because, you know, um, life's not always fair, is it? And people can, you know, I, I feel that as property developers, we're so lucky and we're so privileged to be able to have these choices. And especially in the UK, we have got so many options. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of people out there that just do not have the choices that we have. Um, and through no fault of their own, I don't blame people at all. There's some people that just have no choice. And then if you can create something special for them and um, I have to say like, the, the, the people that are in there are just loving it and keeping it to the highest, highest level of like um, care because it's, it's inappropriate to, you know, um, behave in a, in, in a bad way in some way like that because it's been given, it's been given such love mm. and we've taken care to put the right people in there. And that's that's what happens, isn't it? If you hand over something that's been created to a high standard. Yeah. I love seeing you talking about this because you can see your whole face light up and you're really kind of full of it, you know, in, in a really lovely, good way. Because it does it does give you a really great feeling as well, doesn't it? When you get it right, when you get the relationships right and you feel yeah. that actually you've got this asset that's also sensible, lucrative, yeah. 
good investment as well yes. and you're yes. making a big difference to people's lives it's like the ultimate win-win strategy I think it really is and mm. also you know we've got guaranteed income now coming in there's no voids um it's on a um a full repair at least so we don't actually have to you know they will keep it in the condition that it was handed over to them and and that's a massive weight off our minds because as a landlord, you know, we've got essays now um, and um, just normal buy to lets and things. Um, you know, you get you get those phone calls in the middle of the night and uh, things have gone wrong or things have gone missing or whatever. Um, where when you've got a fantastic provider who's really looking after it and managing it for you, it's just a it's just a breeze. I shouldn't really say that. Tempted fate, haven't I? There, touching some wood. But it is a breeze. It's guaranteed, and it's uh, yeah. and oftentimes it's no less. It can be more than you would get if you were just renting it out to a family. Particularly um, by the time you've looked at your for not covering the voids, because yes. generally, you know, even if you've got the market as hot as it is now, the family moves out, you need to repaint a little bit, do a quick touch up before the next lot move in. You end up it being empty for a month very often, don't you, between tenants, you know, um, and that eats into your profits very quickly over a, over a year, you know. And so, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's, it's, it can just work brilliantly. Do you have any tips or advice for property investors, Liz? Oh, yes. So I'd say, first of all, don't be scared of it, because I think a lot of people are scared because the exits are a bit tricky with the old uh, finance companies. Like you said, they're getting they're getting a bit more open minded about it. There's some fantastic brokers, particularly in your group um, there. If you get that exit correct and if you um, I guess, again, as I would always say, if you deepen that relationship with your provider, be really honest with them. Um, if the numbers aren't working and what they can bring you isn't really exactly going to work for your to stack the deal, go back to them. Um, find out if there's any movement on there. Find out if there's any way you can do um, um, a free, uh, especially when you're negotiating a deal from the top end as well. Just just try and save save um, save as much money as you can, but make sure that um, the deal stacks. You are secure in your exit that's super important and you've planned your exit way before you have even looked at a property that was my biggest mistake and that was the thing that I would highly recommend you get a compliant product that your broker is fully fully aware of so when you're looking for insurance and when you're looking for that finance use the word supported living and if they because oftentimes Lisa I don't know if this has happened to any in the community when I have talked about something and someone hasn't understood it, they gloss over it. And that's how I got into the problem I did. And they'll go, yeah, 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 we do that. And I yeah, say, I do you know what that means? Do you know what supported accommodation, supported living means? And they go, um, not really, social house. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So they don't know. And if you <laughs> get really really good advice absolutely if they gloss over a bit and just say it's okay that they probably don't fully get the implications of it yeah exactly yeah. you've got to I, I, my, I guess my biggest tip would be ask ask and ask again when you've got that insurance policy in front of you and it says you know it doesn't say vulnerable talents or whatever you want to call them mm. um it, if it doesn't specify exactly what the case is you're not covered it's yeah. it's illegal so ask 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 again with the finance products with the insurance with everything um and and that will save you a lot of pain <laughs> and you can sleep easy at night thank you liz it's been really brilliant chatting to you thanks so, so much thank such you such a pleasure thank you sir